Hello, I'm Richard with ev for You Custom Conversions. And today we're going to talk about something that comes up all the time. I mean, it doesn't matter uh, what any other issues are uh, when it comes to a conversion. There's always this one that comes into play, and that is cost. And the question is, why does it cost so much to do a conversion? So today, today we're going to keep it uh, simple. We're just going to give you an overview of the components used and a, a, you know, a real ballpark figure what those components cost. And you, you can spend more, you can spend less, but you're probably not going to spend uh, a whole lot less and get quality components. So we're going to walk through that and let you see why does it cost so much to convert to electric. Well, when it comes to the cost of an electric conversion, the number one component cost are the batteries. That's still going to be your largest expenditure on any given component will be your battery cost. Now, let's take a look at battery cost. And typically, uh, we have anywhere from 36 to 100 cells that we use. And we're going to use the minimum. So we'll say 36 cells. And 36 cells um, you can have the two most common sizes that we use in a conversion um, are the 100 amp hour cells and the 180 amp hour cells. And so the rough cost of those, these are about $150 per cell, and these are about $260 per cell. And so if we go with 36 of them, that would equal $5,400 here in 9360 for the 180 amp hours. So that's the cost, but let, let's let's kind of fill in a few of the, the blanks here. With uh, a 2,000 pound car, If you used 36 100 amp hour cells, that should give you about 48 miles of range. Okay? So, I mean, you could go with fewer cells. You're going to have a, uh, you're going to have less range, and you're going to have less top end, speed-wise. So, what if we go with 36 of the 180s? Well, that would be about 86 miles of range. And so, 36 cells, um, just so I don't make a mistake on my memory here. Get the calculator to come up, 36. 
It's about 119 volts. And that's usually the minimum that we want to use with the systems that we typically install and to be freeway capable. So that's just the battery cost. Like you said, you can use fewer cells, but typically for a freeway capable vehicle, that's the minimum that we use. You can use, um, you know, smaller cells. You don't have to use 100 amps. You can use something smaller, but then that range figure is going to go down. The other issue becomes, um, you know, what the amount of power that you can draw out of that battery pack uh, over a given period of time. So there's a lot of variables and, and, and a lot of reasons why we don't use fewer than 36 100 amp hour cells. So let's, uh, let's look at some other aspects here. All right, we just talked about the batteries and the associated costs. But there's other components used in our conversion. And that is the batteries. We also uh, typically have an onboard charger to charge the batteries. You gotta have a motor to propel the car, a controller to control the, uh, the motor output, and then a, an adapter coupler to uh, uh, mount the motor and couple it to the transmission, and then a DC to DC converter which uh, provides our 12 volts. Um, some people use it as a sole 12 volt source but and or with a, uh, an auxiliary battery. Either way you have that cost. So what are some of those costs? We looked at the, uh, the batteries our, our minimum cost there with the 36 100 amp hour cells was $5,400. And uh, the charger, you can get a decent charger for about 700 bucks. And you can spend a lot more than that. A motor, uh, you know, with shipping it actually be a little bit more, but you can get it around $2,000. Um, and this would be a a DC motor and a controller, air cooled controller like the Curtis, about fifteen hundred bucks. Again, you can get them for twice that and even more. Adapter coupler, you can make your own for less, but you can get get them off the shelf for a lot of different vehicles. Eight to nine hundred dollars, and the DC to DC converter again, wide range of costs on that, but you can get them as cheap as around three hundred dollars. Two seventy five, I think, is about the cheapest. And so there we have it. Now, add that up. If I did the math correctly, that comes to ten thousand. $700. Not cheap. But let me uh, let me add a little something to this since this is what's most common today. Um, an AC conversion for the motor and inverter. Those two components, you're looking at about $4,700. So, you know, a little bit more than the, the bottom line uh, DC setup. But that gives you the real world scenario here. That's why it costs what it costs. Um, you might be able to get the batteries a little bit less. You might be able to get a charger for a little bit less. Motor and controller, just a little bit. I mean, 
you can always cut corners and buy used components and that type of thing. Um, but this is a good ballpark figure. Now, oh, there's a, one other aspect that I want to share with you. Okay, the components that we just discussed, those are the main components. But they're not the only components. You've also got the battery containment. You have to be able to uh, contain and mount the, the batteries in the vehicle. And it has to be done in a way that is safe so that they stay in place during an accident. Uh, you've got motor mounts. There's very few exceptions to that. Uh, early Porsches and uh, the uh, early air-cooled VWs mounted directly to the transaxle with no additional motor mounts required. I can't think of any others off the top of my head where that's true. So you're typically going to have motor mounts. Um, throttle control, you've got options there, but they all cost money. Uh, cheapest one is probably like $65 and up from there. You've got gauges. Again, you can choose as few or as many gauges as you want, but you're going to typically want to have uh, at least one gauge so you can keep track of that battery pack uh, capacity, your fuel gauge, so to speak. You may or may not want a heater, but if you want one, it's going to cost you money. The cost of the wiring, connectors, fuses, switches, the charge port, nuts, bolts, washers, on and on and on. We find that on the typical conversion, that the miscellaneous components, heat shrink, nuts and bolts and washers and switches, fuses, two to $3,000. But again, you can skimp and, and do it, uh, you know, uh, as inexpensively as possible, but there's a minimum cost that is higher than an amazing amount of people uh, anticipate. When we tell people a ballpark figure uh, without going into any specifics of their particular vehicle or conversion desires, and they find out how much it costs, a lot of people are shocked at, at the cost. So that's why we thought we'd do this little video, kind of give you a little um, view, some insight as to why it costs what it costs. A little bit of an explanation as to why is it you know going to be ten thousand dollars or more and typically you'll find if you do a lithium uh, conversion and you do it yourself you're going to be in the about fifteen thousand dollar range uh, it's just hard to get around it the uh, least expensive safe reliable conversion that we've ever seen We've done some videos on it, $7,500 to $8,000. And now you add the uh, $5,400 onto that. Um, you know, eight and five is 13. So maybe 13 and a half thousand. Uh, that would be someone that's extremely resourceful and um, able to engineer uh, a project with the uh, greatest economy in mind. So there you have it. I hope you uh, appreciate uh, some of this information. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching. And remember, if you have any questions or comments, please email them. Don't list them on, uh, on the YouTube channel. We're going to be um, as we're getting busier again, winter time we were answering some of those, uh, but we're going to cease to uh, respond to those, which means that your comments and questions won't be posted because they require approval. And so if you want to get the word to us, um, please email us at info, or, yeah, info at ev4unow.com. We'll see you next time. Hello. I'm Richard with EV for You Custom Conversions. You want to learn more? You want to learn about all the components in greater detail? 
You want to actually install the components and wire conversion, test it and drive it? Well, you can. By attending one of ev for us three-day hands-on conversion workshops. You will get a chance to learn, discuss, ask questions about all the components used in the conversion. Wiring techniques, hardware used, safety, how it all goes together, and much more. But we don't just talk about it. We go into the shop and install the components in a vehicle, wire it up, and test it. After testing in the shop, we test it on our test track and in the industrial park where we're located. One of the vehicles we'll be using in 2014 is our sand rail. It's a blast. So come join us for three days of education and fun. Meet people from all over in a beautiful setting while learning how to convert a vehicle from gas to electric. ev for You provides lunch each day at great local restaurants. After hours, you can visit many of the local attractions, like Shasta Lake, the largest lake in California, Shasta Dam, the second largest concrete dam in the United States, Shasta Caverns. You can take a dinner cruise on Shasta Lake, take a walk on the Sundial Bridge, visit Mount Shasta. There's night skiing available during the winter. Visit Bernie Falls National Recreation Area or go kayaking at Whiskey Town Lake. You can check out the source of the Sacramento River. The Sacramento River is the largest river in the state of California, and you can see where it bubbles out out of the ground. We've got world-class fishing, hiking, and biking, all within minutes of EV for you's shop. So we hope you'll join us. So visit www.ev4unow.com and register today. The class sizes are limited, so don't delay.